In this video, we're going to continue to look at reciprocals of functions. Um, today, we're looking at reciprocals of quadratic functions. So in our previous section, uh, the functions we looked at had linear denominators, so the reciprocals of linear functions. But there's no reason that functions can't have uh, reciprocals of polynomials of any degree. Uh, for example, we could have quadratic polynomial uh, functions and look at quadratic reciprocal functions. And because quadratics can have zero or one or two x-intercepts and that parabolic shape, uh, the reciprocal of a quadratic becomes a little bit more complex. So we're going to see how we can analyze and graph functions like this. So let's start by looking at the function f of x equals 2 over x squared minus 4. And I'd like to figure out what the graph looks like and why it looks like that. So we're going to jump over to Desmos. And you can see in Desmos I've graphed the function f of x equals 2 over x squared minus 4. And the function in red looks like this. Uh, quite a bit different than our linear functions, but we can see some similarities. For example, it looks like I have some asymptotes vertical asymptotes around negative 2 and positive 2. Let's just write that in. Okay, so I'm throwing in some asymptotes. And I can't tell for sure, but it does look like I have a horizontal asymptote. It looks like my function is getting closer and closer and closer to a y value of 0. Again, hard to tell. So the bigger question we want to answer is why does the reciprocal of this quadratic, right, reciprocal of the function x squared minus 4, look like my function in red? So there's my normal function, my normal quadratic. Why does its reciprocal look like that? So let's go back to the equation. Let's take this equation and factor the denominator. So let's think about our factoring. If I have a numerator of 2, can't factor that. My denominator is x squared minus 4. This is a special type of factoring called difference of squares. So I end up with two brackets. Square root of the first term in both brackets. Positive sign in the first bracket, negative sign in the second bracket, and then the square root of my last term, which is 2. So I have two factors, x plus 2 and x minus 2. When we looked at our linear functions, we saw that when we have a term in the denominator that cannot be 0, we end up with vertical asymptotes. So I know that x plus 2 can't be 0, which means that x can't be negative 2. And I know that x minus 2 can't be 0 which means x can't be positive 2. So those are my restrictions. These are my vertical asymptotes. And let's look at the function again. My function agrees with me. I have vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 2. But more than that, if I compare this to my quadratic, I notice that my x-intercepts in my original quadratic function, x squared minus 4, have become asymptotes in my reciprocal function. I can also play around with this function and look at x-intercepts and y-intercepts. 
find an x-intercept, we need to make the function equal 0. We have 2 over x squared minus 4 equals 0. When I cross multiply, I end up with 0 equals 2. This is one of those statements in math that should scream at you. When we see this, this is math's way of telling us that there are no x-intercepts. For my y-intercept, y-intercepts happen when x is 0. So I make x 0 in my equation. And I end up with 2 over negative 4 or negative 1 half. So I do see a y-intercept at 0 and negative 0 0.5. Again, if I go back to Desmos, that agrees with me. So to summarize this function, I can see how as x gets very negative or x gets very positive, the function's approaching 0 from above. It's approaching 0 from the positive side. And as my function gets closer and closer to negative 2, I see that asymptote. And as my function gets closer to positive 2, I see that asymptote. And I have a y-intercept at negative 0 0.5. Okay, let's try a slightly different function. f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 4 this time. And I want you to try and figure out all of its key behaviors. So how does this behave? Well, the first thing we want to try is factoring the denominator. Quick inspection should tell us that this is a quadratic type function that can't be factored. Okay, it, it looks like my difference of squares, but remember, difference of squares needs to be a negative sign in between the two terms, and this is positive. So we can't factor this. Because we can't factor this, we can summarize that there are no vertical asymptotes. Our domain of this function, because there's no vertical asymptotes, is going to be just x is an element of the real numbers. So if we can't factor it. If we can't find vertical asymptotes, we can find x and y. So x-intercepts happen when the function's 0, and we're going to see the same thing that we just saw. When I cross multiply, I end up with 0 equals 1. So we have no x-intercepts. To find the y-intercept, we're going to evaluate the function when x is 0. So I'm going to have 1 over 0 squared plus 4, or just 1 quarter. So I have a y-intercept at 0 and positive 0 0.25. And I have to apologize for my pen. I don't know why it's doing this so much connecting parts of my words that don't need to be connected. So, to summarize, I can't factor this, which means there's no vertical asymptotes, which means the domain is anything. I tried to find the x and y intercepts. I found that there are no x intercepts, which means probably 
a horizontal asymptote through y equals 0. Maybe. Found my y-intercept by making x equals 0. And I end up with a y-intercept at 0 and 0 0.25. I can't figure out what this graph looks like. So I'm going to go back to Desmos. I'm going to throw this graph into Desmos. And what do I see? I see a graph that looks pretty much flat, except for this little hump in the middle where it rises up to my y-intercept of 0.25. This graph is just a little hill. How could I have figured out that this graph looks like this? Well, if I graph my original function, x squared plus 4, and zoom out again, we can see that the parabola, the original parabola, had no x-intercepts, which means it won't have any vertical asymptotes. If this doesn't have any vertical asymptotes, well, I just end up with this little hump shape. So that should be enough for this video. We're going to continue in class to look at behaviors of our rational functions based on how their original function behaves. For example, quadratics behave in a certain way with respect to their x-intercepts. And we can predict that the rational functions will behave the same way um, based on how the quadratic function is factored and whatnot in the denominator. Oh.